Coming up, the Trump budget is out. What's it mean for general aviation? We'll find out. Working to improve the student pilot dropout rate, we check out one school that does it best. Plus, it's not Aladdin, but the U.S. Navy takes us on a magic carpet ride. We head to an active carrier to see the latest technology. And coming to a fly-in near you, Doc the B-29 gets cleared to hit the circuit. The OPA Live this week begins in just a moment. The dream is real, a truly affordable personal jet aircraft. The Subsonics kit is priced at only $42,000. Kit Plus engine is still under hundred k Add instruments, upholstery, and paint, and you're flying at sonicsaircraft.com. If President Trump gets his way, the FAA is going to lose control of air traffic control. As we recorded this, the administration had just released the so-called skinny budget. They want to cut the Department of Transportation by 13 percent, and the administration wants to transfer air traffic control to an independent, non-governmental organization. We haven't seen the details of how they plan to pay for it, but we do know that Chairman Bill Schuster of the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee is happy with the idea. He's been pushing that same idea with a privatized air traffic control system paid for in part with user fees. But AOPA remains firm. No user fees on general aviation, period. And a lot of people in Congress don't like the idea of privatizing air traffic control either. So stay tuned, fun times ahead. As Congress wrangles with the federal budget, the one thing that shouldn't be cut is money for contract control towers. These are towers operated by private contractors to the FAA. There are more than 250 of these towers at smaller airports, and they are cheaper to operate than FAA staff towers. AOPA joined with eight other organizations in a, a letter to Congress urging full funding for contract towers. Well, folks, we got some mail this week. A letter from the FAA addressed to AOPA President Mark Baker and dated February 13, 2017. It says it's in response to the AOPA EAA petition asking that pilots flying recreationally be able to do so without a medical certificate. Now this is the first response we've gotten from the FAA since we filed that petition back in 2012, as in five years ago. The letter just lets us know that the FAA doesn't plan to take further action on the five-year-old petition because of the basic med legislation passed last summer. So to the folks at 800 Independence Avenue, thanks for the fast follow-up. So Melissa, I think they sent it on their new fax machine, don't you think? <laughs> yes, uh, so that's my world. Welcome <laughs> to it. <laughs> Good on you. Anyhow, meanwhile, AOPA is asking our neighboring countries to recognize the basic med certification. As it stands now, you still need a third-class medical or higher to fly to Canada, Mexico, or the Bahamas. AOPA President Mark Baker wrote to all three countries this week, urging them to recognize the basic med certification when it becomes effective on May 1st. General aviation flights from the U.S. represent nearly 30 percent of the GA traffic in the Bahamas, Canada, and Mexico. And hey, if you're like most pilots, you may still have questions about basic med. AOPA is here to help. We're hosting a live webinar to answer all your questions. It's all brought to you by Pilot Protection Services. Join AOPA's Pilot Information Center and medical certification experts live on YouTube for the informative discussion. We also have one of our legal services plan attorneys answering your questions. It's at 8 p.m. Eastern on March 22nd. Find the link on our websites. 80% dropout. Up to 80% of those who start flight training drop out without ever earning a certificate. And that's a huge number of lost potential pilots, and it's unsustainable for the industry. AOPA's You Can Fly program is working to reverse the trend. You Can Fly is developing resources to help flight schools provide the best training and customer experience possible. This week, we have the story of Flight Training Professionals, a Florida flight school that works extra hard to make students feel at home throughout their flight training. We want the customers to feel like we're their aviation home and they can always come to us. The instructors here are here because they, they want to fly and they want to, they want to teach. Um, they're really teaching instructors as opposed to time building instructors that you would get at some of the other schools. I am a flight instructor and I love it and I've been doing it for the past 12 years and it's, I plan on doing it for as long as I can. We're working on making safe GA pilots rather than 
crushing private and instrument to get you to multi and commercial as fast as possible. I love coming to work. I love that all my customers are different people and every day I get to come and train them and they have strengths and weaknesses and it's, it's really rewarding. Uh, customers are excellent. Uh, they communicate very well. Uh, never once were we on the schedule and I got a cancellation. When anybody comes in the office, no matter if we're expecting them or not expecting them, someone always hops up, greets them. We try to make them feel at home. We have a really nice like lounge lobby area with the couches and stuff, and we always try to invite people in, sit down, let's talk, let's go out to the airplanes, and we really try to get to know people even before they even decide that they want to even do flight training. We encourage spending time together, even outside of aviation. Uh, too many flight schools, it, it's always about the business instead of about the person. It was really a home for me. Um, and I did not necessarily get that sense from other schools. We try to make it a fun environment for both the staff and the customers. If you aren't having fun, you're not learning, you don't want to come to work, you don't want to come flying. And I think that's really the, the essence of it. Flight Training Professionals won AOPA's award for Best Flight School of 2016. They're also helping Rusty Pilots get back in the air by hosting a Rusty Pilot seminar on March 25th, presented by AOPA Ambassador Jamie Beckett. So Melissa, I've got a little experience there. You may recall that uh, I got my commercial certificate uh, down there at that flight school at Flight Training Professionals last January, and they really do a nice job. Really, oh. really professional operation and uh, very helpful and got me through some really challenging maneuvers that I didn't like much. But, uh, <laughs> That's nice. A yeah. nice change from certainly what I experienced when I learned to fly way back in the 80s. Uh -huh. <laughs> so good, good to hear. And if you'd like to get help paying for flight training, AOPA wants to hear from you. There are two scholarship programs open right now, both of which are going to provide numerous people with flight training funds. The programs are made possible by generous gifts to the AOPA Foundation. There's one for high school students, the You Can Fly program is awarding 20 $5,000 scholarships. The AOPA Foundation is awarding others. Find all the details on our website. One program that is helping many get started on their flight training journey is EA's Young Eagles program. Young Eagles gives youth an opportunity to experience the thrill of flying in a general aviation airplane for the first time. You may remember Jody Gothrop from our coverage at AirVenture this past July. Jody was the two millionth Young Eagle and flew with Harrison Ford to celebrate. She just reached a major milestone in her flight training for solo. So congratulations, Jody. When we come back, B-29 Super Fortress dock is cleared direct to an event near you. And we head out to an active aircraft carrier to see the Navy's latest technology. The smoke is on. Perfect start. He's putting on the pressure. What a dramatic finale! The Red Bull Air Race World Championship returns to San Diego Bay, April 15th and 16th, and play Red Bull Air Race, the game. Welcome back. B-29 Doc's mission is a go. The world's second currently airworthy Super Fortress just got approval to start touring the country. Doc officially completed phase one of flight testing, so the FAA approved a new airworthiness certificate, removing the restrictions on the distance Doc can fly. That means you'll likely see Doc at air shows around the country this summer. Doc still needs a permanent home in Wichita, though, and right now the old bird is stored in a temporary hangar where the public has limited access. To find out how you can help Doc move to a permanent home, visit Doc's website. Some sad news this week. Italian aircraft designer Luigi Pescali has died. He was the force behind many Technum airplanes. Professor Pescali started designing and building airplanes in the 50s. He founded Technum in 1986 with his brother. His last design, the P-2012 Traveler, is being tested now. Professor Luigi Gino Pescale was 93 years old. The Red Bull Air Race has the rest of its schedule firmed up. The low-flying, hard-turning, G-pulling series has added Portugal and Germany onto the year's stops. The next air race is in San Diego, April 15th and 16th. AOP Alive will be there to bring you coverage from the race. Find all the details on the Red Bull Air Race Series websites. The Aircraft Electronics Association held its 60th annual convention in New Orleans this week. The organization represents nearly 1,300 avionics shops, manufacturers, and related businesses in more than 40 countries. News this year included Avidyne's release 10.2 software, which adds synthetic vision, shown here on the new IFD 550 Navigator. It's also compatible with Avidyne's new IFD 100 iPad app. 
Aperio turned heads with Stratus Power, a TSO'd dual USB power port designed to keep tablets and smartphones running in flight. It mounts easily in a round hole. Intercom innovator PS Engineering launched its PAC-45 Special Mission Audio Control System. Dimensional sound allows the pilot to place six comm frequencies in different positions, making it easier to catch important information. We hope you'll join us in a few weeks for Sun and Fun. AOPA will have a big presence at the annual fly-in, and we're back in the spot we've been for the last two years. Come by and learn more about your AOPA member benefits and check out the Programs Pavilion. It will host seminars and discussions to help advance your flying. AOPA Director of Outreach and Events, Chris Eads, says there are two pilot town halls this year. One will be a coffee and donuts event, one will be a free ice cream social uh, to, uh, on Wednesday and on Friday. Opportunity for you to get close uh, and, and uh, conversational with Mark Baker and learn what AOPA is doing right now uh, on behalf of all pilots in America. Make your plans now to be there. Find all the information on the Sun and Fun website. Is there a doctor on board? Ever heard that on a commercial flight? Well, our Dr. Jonathan Sackier did, and he learned a thing or two from it. So what did I learn from this experience? Well, an older chap went flying feeling unwell. How many passengers do that, exposing themselves and others to obvious risk? How many pilots do this, either on commercial flights or worse still, when piloting themselves? He had medical conditions that he failed to disclose to two doctors who were trying to help him. That is really bad, of course, but how many of you hide things from doctors? But please don't. You can hear the full story at AOPALive.org. The spot landing is one of the toughest things for a pilot to master. Pitch, airspeed, rate of descent, power, all have to be spot on and all are constantly changing. And changing one thing always means adjusting several other things as well. Now imagine you're trying to make a spot landing in a 47,000 pound jet fighter thundering along at 125 knots. And the spot you're aiming for is moving up and down 30 feet and away from you at an angle. Plus, you have to maintain a precise angle of attack to make sure you catch the wire. There you go, nice. See, easy peasy. On glide slope, but I'm right of course. So what I have to do now is, I, and I have the airplane all stable and, it, and it, touching nothing else, it would fly what I need to. So I bring the stick left, now I've just dumped some of my lift, I have to bring, come back on the stick and add some power. As I get back over, now I've got to correct back again, and correct back again, and there are just dozens of corrections, tiny corrections that I'm making to capture that. Two to three hundred corrections in the short 18 seconds the fighter is on final to the ship. The truth, nothing easy about it. But by 2020, the Navy's Super Hornets will get a software upgrade that will revolutionize the way aviators fly to the deck. So we've decoupled roll from yaw from pitch. So um, in a normal airplane, they're all related to each other. The Super Hornet is completely fly-by-wire. Control surfaces, flaps, throttles, all commanded by the computer. So when the magic carpet software is enabled, the computer puts the aircraft into a perfect three-degree glide slope at the precise speed needed and keeps it there. The control stick is remapped so the pilot has direct control of the flight path. So when you see a slightly low ball, you just pull back and hold, which is, for aviators, is bizarrely different than how you fly airplanes today. You move the stick to position the aircraft on the glide slope, but pitch never changes. So what Buddy and his team have done is they've linked the position of the trailing edge flaps to the longitudinal stick. But instead of as much the horizontal stab that's driving this up and down piece, it's the, 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 the trailing edge flap is doing this. This is not how hornets normally work. It's changing directly the lift of the wing based on longitudinal, so there's no pitch associated. The other thing that the LSOs have noticed is there's no nose movement on these airplanes. They're stable like this, and they're translating up and down the glide slope because we're not moving the nose, we're moving the, the flaps to change the lift characteristics of the wing dynamically based on the stick. And it makes for better traps and it's pretty impressive. They, from what I've seen, these guys are nailing the three wire every time. So Melissa, it was an amazing uh, experience to go to the carrier and then go get to fly the simulator and uh, wow, what a, what a great piece of technology. It, it looks amazing, so <laughs> a great trip. Yeah, it was and it'll be interesting to see when uh, Magic Car Carpet comes online, the difference that it'll make uh, for the pilots and uh, also the guys on the ship. 
it has to make it easier, I would think. Uh, Still so. hard. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, finally this week, one inventor and aviator of sorts is grounded in his home country of France. The creator of the flyboard, this turbine-powered contraption, says the French aviation authorities are grounding his device in launching a criminal investigation. They said his test flights of the hover platform were Ill illegal. His board and its engines are not certified. So one, one pretty bizarre piece <laughs> of equipment, I got to say. What do you think would happen in the United States if somebody tried to fly something like well, that? Well, we were debating that. Uh, we think it'll be a powered lift if, if it ever right. <laughs> makes it to the United States, you know, heavier than, than uh, air, aircraft and kind of like the Martin Jetpack. Ah. So, so I think that's certified okay. under Part 27 Rotocraft in New Zealand anyway. I think they're working towards that. Okay, well, I'll let you try it first, all right? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for spending part of your week with us. Join us again next Thursday for another AOP Live this week. There are many important things to consider before purchasing an aircraft. Let the experts at Aerospace Reports help guide you through the process. We combine expert knowledge with our long-standing commitment to personalized customer service to perfect your transaction. Learn more at aerospacereports.com.